we're going to look at a numerical method here for finding uh, roots, for locating roots. It doesn't always work, but we're going to look at the cases when it does and doesn't work. So the method is um, that we find y equals f of x. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find a root of. And then we rearrange this into the form of x is equal to some function of x. Okay, so for example, if we had the quadratic x squared, so this is the example, x squared, uh, let's say minus 3x plus 5 is equal to 0, we would re rearrange to 3x is equal to x squared plus 5, and that will give x is equal to x squared over 3 plus 5 over 3, and that would be our g of x, okay? Then the next step is uh, recursion. I don't know if I've spelled that right, but anyway. So we write xn plus 1 is equal to xn squared over 3 plus 5 over 3. And then the way we form this recursion, we, we could just keep substituting in values. But what we do is we draw it on a diagram just to check it's actually converging for once. So we we draw our diagram and I'm just going to now draw random functions and we're going to talk about the four possible types of diagram you can get. Okay, so we plot the line y equals x, which represents this side, okay, y equals x. So that goes to here. And then I'm not going to plot this precise g of x, I'm just going to plot a generic function so um, let's just plot something that looks like this okay and that would be our g of x because the roots are at the same point that y equals x is equal to y equals g of x okay because x is equal to g of x if y is equal to f of x and then we pick an x naught and we go up uh, to the graph and this gives us our our x1 okay because um, xn plus 1 is the value of g of x evaluated at x of n so x of 1 is equal to x naught over so on but that's just the example um, is equal to g of x naught so then what we do is as a recursion as we would do for a recursion we then make that our new x value okay and the way we do that is we draw across to the line y equals x and then from y equals x we draw back down to the curve that's our x2 and then we draw back to the straight line back to the curve and I've done this diagram quite small but we're getting this we're almost getting this uh, staircase type look and we're gradually getting closer and closer to the root. So, a diagram that looks like this is called a convergent staircase diagram. But in the title, we also said we we're going to look at cobweb diagrams, so we'll see that now. And notice there's nothing intrinsically different about a staircase or cobweb diagram. We're we're doing the same method, okay? It's just sometimes, based on the properties of the function um, we're looking at, you get a, a staircase or a cobweb. So here, we might pick this as our x naught. We're looking to locate this root. So we go up and across, and then to the curve, then to the line, then to the curve, then to the line, then to the curve, then to the line, then to the curve, then to the line. And we're getting closer to this point, but in this sort of spiral. So we'll call this a convergent cobweb diagram. And the question is, do we always get this convergent? Does this method always work? The answer, unfortunately, is no, because we would we would love if it worked every time. Um, but sometimes we get graphs that look like this. OK, 
okay so f um, for example we might have some sort of curve that really shoots up like this and um, we'll pick some some x naught here we go up across to the curve now we have to go to the curve again now we go to the line again now we go to the curve again now we go to the line again and we, we're actually divergent we're not getting any close to the root um, well we're not getting closer to this root we are in fact getting closer to this root here okay so it's finding this root which is strange why is it finding this one and not this one um, so this is a divergent staircase diagram if we just sectioned off this region but here this is convergent okay works the same as before and we'll look at the property of why why this method finds this route but doesn't find this route in a second and then we can get a similar thing with cobweb diagrams um, if okay, so again we need our line y equals x oh, it's gone terribly Okay, so if for example we have a graph that looks like this, okay, um, we might pick our x naught here, say curve line. Well, my curve is not supposed to go that that straight, but it'll come out a bit like this, okay curve, line, the curve, to the line again and we can keep keep going anyway you see we're getting this like outward spiral so that's not convergent so that's a divergent cobweb diagram so if our root is at a point alpha let's say then we get convergence to alpha if minus one is less than the gradient of g of x evaluated at a so g dash of a so remember g of x is our function so it's at x is equal to g of x so not our original f of x g of x this this graph here okay um, the curve that we draw in our cobweb diagram so that's when we get convergence so you can see here this gradient is clearly between 1 and minus 1 and this one's steep so we don't it doesn't converge to there okay and then finally if we look at these so we get these staircases graphs are going up and when we get the cobwebs we've got negative gradient okay so staircase if g dash of a is greater than naught cobweb g dash of a is less than naught okay so i hope you this a nice overview of cobweb and staircase diagrams if you were to do this as an exam question you'd have to draw the diagrams but you would also have to say um, if you're actually going to find the root you would then have to do the iterative process so from the diagram you would have to say that uh, you would then come down this is your x1 um, your x2 and you keep going okay and it, they might say find x4 or find x7 or you know that they'll t tell you when to stop the recurrence or find or stop when you get within 0 0.01 of the of the roots and all that Okay, so thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.